Good morning. Pastor Sean here. Today is Friday, November 4th. And oh, I'm sorry, 3rd. <laughs> it is Friday, November 3rd. And this is your morning prayer. So let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, we begin with Ezra today. Ezra chapters 1 through 3. So Ezra is... Um, well, we begin with the proclamation of King Cyrus, uh, that uh, as he was led by God to uh, to announce this, that uh, the Jews should return to Jerusalem and rebuild their temple. Okay, uh, so we do see how God is still, you know, even using a, a foreign pagan king to to declare that the, the temple should be rebuilt. So God is still controlling all things here, and uh, what we get in Ezra are are two distinct phases of that uh, restoration process. So the, the first part is the return from captivity under the leadership of Zerubbabel in about 538 BC. And uh, this group came back and they resettled in the land. Um, however, they, well, they started to restore the temple, but then they stopped. And they didn't complete it or didn't start doing it again for another 20 years. So... Um, it, they, they ran into some issues. <laughs> um, and really, it's, it's when the prophets uh, Haggai and, and Zechariah show up and encourage the people to to finish the work is when it uh, finally uh, comes to fruition. And so the first six chapters of Ezra cover that, that initial period. Um, between chapter six and chapter seven, we actually have a span of time that, that's about 50 years. So uh, time passes, a lot of time between those two chapters. Uh, during that period is when the events of uh, the book of Esther that those uh, those events happen, um, and then the remaining chapters of Ezra talk about um, him leading a, a second group of exiles uh, home from Babylon, and how he uh, takes part in a, a reformation of the religious life of the people of Israel. Now, according to Jewish tradition, Ezra is a, a fairly important figure because he played a, an important role in gathering together all of the individual books of God's word and then putting them together into what we would refer to as the Old Testament. So kind of a kind of an important guy. The main theme that we have going on in Ezra is God's grace contrasted against man's sinfulness. And, you know, we begin with God's graciousness. And, and his, his, just his blessing that he restores Israel to their land. He, he fulfills all of his promises to bring them back and, and resettles them there. And the people then respond by neglecting to rebuild the temple. And they were discouraged um, by the opposition of, the, of their enemies, and, and they were fearful. Uh, they, they regressed back into the habit of, of marrying uh, intermarrying with their pagan neighbors, which was the problem or part of the problem originally <laughs> that eventually led the people to be taken into exile. So um, not not a good look <laughs> as they, they try to settle back and, and be God's people. But through it all, God, of course, remains patient and shows grace and mercy and um, continues to uh, preserve his people. Uh, through all through all of their sinfulness, so that we can get to the point where Jesus comes and then dies on the cross, and then then there's us. So, uh, chapter one, chapter one of Ezra, pretty straightforward, is the proclamation of King Cyrus um, and an accounting of all the goods that they were allowed to to take back with them. So, um, yeah, not not a lot to really expand on there. Uh, chapter two, a lot of names. Um, I hope I got them all pronounced correctly. Uh, this lists out all the exiles who returned, at least that initial return. And um, you know, when we get to a, a, a text like this with all those names, it is very easy to uh, gloss over that because it, it doesn't really seem to apply to us at all. <laughs> uh, certainly, we can see how it was very important for them in that day. But for us, it just doesn't seem to have any significance. I mean, who, who are these people to us, right? Um, but there, there is some value in reading this because what we see 
by uh, you know listing out their names and and the the numbers of of them of their households, their families who returned, we see that you know yes, yeah, certainly God preserved His people. You know, and then we get the the not the individuals, but the families who who were remembered and brought back. But he he re, he preserved their identity. Okay, because if you think back to Daniel, you know, so, so at least Daniel and his his buddies, they received new Babylonian names. And when they were brought into exile, the the plan was for them to assimilate into Babylonian Babylonian culture. And so the similar thing with the with the other exiles. Now we don't know if they all got new Babylonian names, but you know the expectation was they were now, for all intents and purposes, Babylonians. Um, they were meant to to blend in. And so now by by recounting all the names, the, you know the, the the original Hebrew names of the people, um, God has preserved their identity, and not just their identity as in their their family name, but their identity that this is. This was the name that they were, um, that they had as the children of God in their land, that God had called them to be His His people. So, um, kind of a significant thing. Um, so, definitely not, not something that we just want to skip over because it's a lot of names that are frankly hard for us to uh, pronounce. <laughs> Chapter three then begins the rebuilding process, uh, the rebuilding of the altar and uh, the laying of the foundation of the temple. And, you know, right off the bat, we see that they made it a priority to rebuild the altar because they needed to get back into the sacrifices in order to, you know, to sacrifice, to to um, perform all the feast days and all that. So, you know, forgiveness of sins and, and all this in order to appeal to God uh, for forgiveness. So, you know, this was obviously very important to them. So good on them for that. However, um, you know, they laid the foundation and that's when things kind of they, they laid it and then things kind of trickle off. But what we see at the very end is that once they they laid the foundation and they have kind of this this celebration for this, like yes, we're we're rebuilding the temple, and we read how you know a lot of them were were shouting for joy, you could hear it all over, just joyful shouts. However, some of the older people uh, were were weeping and wailing because you know they were they were sad. <laughs> um, Likely two reasons why, because when they look at the, the new foundations, they are reminded of the destruction of that first temple, uh, reminded of, you know, what caused that, you know, that they, you know, yes, God had preserved them and brought them back, but, you know, they were the problem. They were, they were the ones who brought that upon themselves. And so, you know, just the, 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 the heavy weight of, of that, you know, carrying that, but also um, likely that when they, are looking at this and envisioning what it's going to look like when it's done. They just know that it's not going to match the, the grandeur of Solomon's temple. It's like they had, they had something so good and so perfect and so beautiful. And yet because of their sinfulness, it all got destroyed and, and they would never build back anything remotely close to, to what they had before. And, um, you know, for us, we, we would look to that and, and understanding like, yeah, that's, you know, we, we've we've all been through something like that, where we, we lose something that is very precious to us, and uh, later maybe it's we, we get something similar or or a replacement, but it's it's not the same. It's it's not the same at all, and then we have that kind of longing for what was. But the beautiful thing about what the you know the full story here is, you know, they're looking at this temple and 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 weeping because it's not going to be replaced. That it's never going to be as good. And yet what God is going to do through this restoration project and eventually and in, in, in down, you know, another 500 years or so, well, five, 500, 550 years or, or, or so, give or take, <laughs> is that he will bring his son, the, the new temple and, and his son, Jesus Christ, the new temple will be so much greater than, than any temple. Of, of Solomon's temple just is not even, you know, doesn't even compare because in, in this temple we have the the forgiveness of all sins. We have the complete removal of sins and, and that once for all sacrifice that, that wins us salvation. And so that is, you know, the, the fulfillment, the, the true, you know, rebuilding of the temple in, in the resurrection, right? And when Christ is raised from the dead, you know, the temple is, is built back up, the true temple of God, Um and it is of a magnitude that blows away everything that came before it, you know. So, um, so we we know a little bit of the end of the story there. So um, we can we can see how their their tears are 
um, you know, a little bit premature, <laughs> but uh, but still, it's it's a nice kind of to see how how this all plays out and and all that. So, so that's Ezra chapters one through three. Um, so yeah, enjoy. Let us pray. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Blessings to you on this Friday. Hope you have a great day. Hope your week has gone well and things wrap up nicely for you. And uh, I will see you tomorrow morning. So until then, peace be with you.